Hey, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Today I'm going to show you something that's all around you that most people don't even see. It's called the Matrix and you're inside it right now. No! The circular flow matrix or model shows how products, resources, and money flow in the economy. Now look at your surroundings. Seriously, take a moment and look around you. The matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now in this very room. In a market economy, there's households, which is just people like you and me, and there's also businesses. Now, businesses sell goods and services to the households in something called the product market. It's not like just one place. It's anywhere things are sold, like online or the mall, or the street corner, anywhere you can buy stuff. The computer or phone in front of you right now is a great example. I mean, you didn't produce that. A business did, and they sold it to you in the product market. The same thing applies to your chair or pencil or the book over there, everything around you. But to make those goods and services, businesses need resources like workers and machines. In the free market, households own the resources and they're sold to the businesses in the resource market. Economists point out that there's four categories of resources or four factors of production. The first one is land, which is any natural resource or anything that comes from other nature. Then there's labor, then capital, which is tools and machines. And finally, someone to bring it all together, the entrepreneur. That's why it's called the circular flow matrix. Those resources are being used by the business to produce the products that people turn around and go buy. Now, what about money? Well, it goes the other direction. When you buy your phone in the product market, you had to pay them money. That's called consumer spending. Now, that money makes its way to the businesses, and they call it revenue. But the business doesn't get to keep all that money. They've got to pay for resources, and that's called the cost of production. It's being paid to engineers that develop the phone. Those engineers earn income. Economists break down income into four different types that go along with each of the four factors of production. They're called factor payments. When you sell land, you earn rent. When you sell labor, you earn wages. For capital, you get interest. And for entrepreneurship, you get profit. So this is it, the circular flow matrix that shows how a market economy works. Whoa. Now let me ask you a few questions to see if you really understand the matrix. First question, is your local mall an example of the product market or the resource market? It's both. Some people are there to buy products in the product market, but there's some people who are working or trying to get a job, and that's a resource market. So products, resources, and money are all being exchanged. Okay, next question. Do businesses demand or supply? The answer is both. They demand in the resource market, but they supply in the product market. Households, on the other hand, demand in the product market and they supply in the resource market. So both businesses and households are supplying and demanding. So far, this model is showing the private sector with just households and businesses. But there's a bunch of important things missing, like national defense, schools, and roads. Those things aren't produced by businesses. So let's add in the government and the public sector. The size and role of the government in the economy depends on a country's economic system, but in most market economies, the government still plays a role. First, the government buys goods and services from businesses in the product market, for example, fire trucks. And just like households, they pay for them. That's called government spending. The government also buys resources in the resource market, like teachers and firefighters. Again, it pays for those resources, which is again called government spending. The government then turns around and provides public goods and services, like fire protection, schools, roads, and bridges, to businesses and households. The government also pays money to businesses called subsidies or households called welfare. Economists call those transfer payments. There are situations when the government's giving out money but not for goods and services. It's to meet some other objective like to alleviate poverty or get companies to produce more fuel efficient cars. But how does the government afford to provide public goods and welfare and subsidies? Well, they tax businesses and households. Income taxes and sales taxes fund government projects and programs. Now, there's several things still missing from this matrix, including a financial sector where money isn't spent, it's saved and then loaned out, and also the role of other countries with exports and imports. But for now, this diagram gives you a pretty good idea of how a modern economy works. One final thought. In the movie, the matrix enslaves people. You are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. Many people wonder if capitalism and this hamster wheel of constantly spending and earning and spending and earning enslaves people. Now, would your life be better off if you pulled a Thoreau and just lived out in the woods? I don't know, but what I do know is there's a lot of things you'd have to live without. First, there'd be no cell phones or computers, so say goodbye to YouTube, and also there'd be no modern medicine or hospitals. It would be nice if none of us had to work, but there's a trade-off to that. So does the matrix enslave us or liberate us? Let me know in the comments below, all right? Thanks for watching, till next time. Next video, more videos. Subscribe and leave a comment.